G'day, I'm Grant Kincaid. Welcome to my channel, The Victorian. I'm here in the Grampians National Park, uh, just around the corner from uh, Strawn's campsite. And I'm standing in the middle of the Glenelg River. I'm about uh, probably 500 metres from what's uh, described as the source of the river on the maps. Uh, as you can see, it's dry. There's uh, no water in it at the moment. Um, the Glenelg flows down here through two ranges, north and around to where it's dammed in Rocklands Reservoir. So in this episode we'll be following the river from here, the source, right down to where it flows out to sea at uh, Nelson. So uh, I hope you enjoy the trip. As the Glenelg trickles out of the Grampians, it makes a U-turn and heads due south, forming into its first major body of water, known as Cherry Pool. Cherry Pool's a roadside camp. Uh, there's toilet facilities, washing up facilities. It's a uh, pretty little spot and uh, the river is almost a lake. People can use it for boating and fishing and uh, whatever they like. It is right next to the road and there's plenty of trucks so I don't know how long you'd want to stay there but it's, uh, it's certainly worth a look. As we leave Cherry Pool we head into Rocklands Reservoir. There's a number of campsites around the reservoir and they're all huge. Ferguson's is suitable for tents and swags. At Glendinning you can also bring in vans. There's uh, toilets, showers, camp kitchens, boat ramps. Really worth a look. Rockland's Reservoir was completed in 1953. Windfall it can cover an area of 67 square kilometres. Site we come to after Rocklands is Fulham Streamside Reserve. It's a bit of a drive in and the road can be closed during winter. The next point of interest is Ford Reserve. The first town we come to on the Glenelg River is Balmoral. The pub was built in 1842. Harrow, what a top little spot and a must visit if you're in the area. The population's 150 and most of those 150 are sheep farmers. There's a lot of history in the place and a great pub. The pub was built in 1848, uh, licensed in 1853. I went and sat in there for, I don't know, three or four hours and um, during that time many of the locals came up and sat down and had a drink with me, uh, including the Mayor of Harrow who uh, plonked himself down. I had a good chat to him for about an hour. Uh, really nice place, great people, really worth a look. Many of the towns and sites we visit on the Glenelg River on the way down to Nelson were first visited by Sir Thomas Mitchell in 1836 on his third expedition. One of those towns is Casterton, now known as the home of the Kelpie. The Fort O'Hara campground was named by Major Mitchell when he stayed there in 1836. 
It's at the junction of the Crawford and Glenelg rivers just outside of Dartmoor. Welcome to the Inkpot. There's a couple of different ways you can see the last leg of the Glenelg River. You can do the Great Southwest Walk, which is a 250 kilometre loop starting and finishing from Portland. Marion did this a couple of weeks ago and it nearly killed her. If you're interested in having a look, she has a channel called Maz Tracks. Or, as we chose to do, you can canoe the last 55 kilometres. It's spectacular, easy and well worth doing. So, wraps with ham tomato and cheese. A bloody brown snake right next to the jetty. No fishing for me. So what have we got going on here, Mary? Well, got a wee selection of vegetables, broccolini, carrot and corn. That, um, we're going to go with our Bombay potatoes, which is going to go with our steak and onion, which is now on fire. It's all good. Looking good. So 
here we are, day three on the Glenelg River, paddling our way down from Molside. We've done two 14 and a half kilometre days, the first one was in Skipperworth Springs, and last night we stayed at, where did we stay now? Um, we stayed at Bounds. We stayed at Bounds. We've only got a short day today, uh, seven kilometres, and we're heading to Laslex, and we'll just slum it around for the afternoon, and, uh, and tomorrow we've got a 14 and a half K run in the Nelson to see the end of the trip. But, uh, I can highly recommend this trip. Um, four days, leisurely paddle, the scenery is just spectacular. The campsites are great, there's fresh water in tanks, there's toilets, um, the ranges leave out the fire and uh, fireplaces. So uh, if you want to have a look at the uh, Gold Glenelg National Park, this is certainly a very good way to do it. And here we are at the border. Crossing from Victoria to South Australia. Crossing back into the good old state of Victoria. With the Victorian. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not too far out of Nelson. We've just passed Simpson's Landing and uh, <laughs> we've only got about two and a half k's to go. So we've actually managed to make some fantastic time this morning even though we thought today was going to be a hard slog, which it was, but it hasn't been that bad. Uh, we've had pockets of goodness and pockets of shit. <laughs> so this little outcrop right here was known as the Bag of Flowers. And it was named like that because Sir Thomas Mitchell in 1836, when he was going past from a distance, they looked like bags of flour sitting on a little outcrop of Ireland, I guess. And that's how it's named, Bags of Flower. I'm just coming into the outskirts of Nelson now. There's some housing. At the moment, the water is quite nicely gentle, which is not what we expected. <laughs> to say that we've arrived standing here at the mouth of the Glenelg River. So just over here we've got Nelson and the river flows down into Oxbow Lake, around here into Discovery Bay and out to sea. Hope you've enjoyed the journey. Mm -hmm.